is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Alrighty, Ira, how you doing, my friend? Good morning. Bright and early, good to go, and then off to heat practice. Uh, the Big O Show waits for no one, neither does the time zone change. No, nope, no, it does not, sir. Because life doesn't wait for anybody. If uh, if you wait for it, it runs your ass over. So you uh, you got to attack it. If not, you're done. All right, so I, we, we had a discussion last week. And I told you that I uh, was not very, um, very um, positive about the Heat making a big splash move, whether it's Donovan, whether it's Bradley, whoever. And so developments over the last couple of days still give me no hope in the near term, but give me some hope in the long term but the long term also has a downside to it. And let me explain. So the last couple of days, we find out that Donovan Mitchell has a no trade clause. So he controls his destiny. We find out that Bradley Beal also has a no trade clause, which is a good thing. Now, it's not good early on because both are happy. They got their money. They're not probably going anywhere now at this point. But a year from now, they might decide after another year in Utah, yeah, we're not going anywhere. We're never going to win something. I need to get out. I got my money. Bradley Beal, another year in Loserville. We're never going to win, maybe. But here's my problem with all of that, Ira. A year from now, where is Jimmy Butler after another year of wear and tear? Where is he in July 11th of 2023 at that point when Bradley Beal, when Donovan Mitchell may be a little bitter about their current existence where's where's Kyle Lowry at this point so now if you are able to acquire that whale in 2023's summer now we're wondering where are your lead guys and if those guys are getting old or breaking down then you're going to find yourself waiting for these contracts to expire to then build around i.e. Bradley Beal or Donovan Mitchell so walk me off the ledge I'll walk you off the ledge for this reason. You're talking to me about next summer. I'm yeah, saying I have, no, I have no hope for this summer. That's why I'm saying. Don, well, you know what? There's a difference. I, I guess technically, if you're saying summer in September 21st, I might agree. However, I don't think it'll take an entire season for Donovan Mitchell to appreciate the direction the Jazz are going or not going. And I'll tell you why, Big O. When they made the Rudy Gobert trade, they did not trade Rudy Gobert for an immediate asset. God bless Patrick Beverly yeah. and all the pieces they got. They got draft choices. They got a boatload of draft choices. Yeah. If I'm Donovan Mitchell and they don't reflip those draft choices in July or August or ahead of the season, I'm realizing, just like you mentioned with the other guys, it could be a waste of a year for him as his team waits to cash in. But who do you expect him to flip it for? Who's available? Who should they be getting? Once you have packages, there's always something. There's, in other words, but, but, I Rudy, mean, but, but but tell me who they should be targeting right now. That's 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 available out there. That is obviously a sign and trade with DeAndre Ayton would be a place to start to replace your center with a more offensive minded okay. center. You can go in a direction like that. There were always options. What I'm saying is this: Donovan is, Mitchell is he offensive? Not, is he really offensive enough? Compared to Rudy Gobert, is. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, but that's like, come on, dude. That's, you know, that's... So what I'm saying is this. Donovan Mitchell has a new coach in a new situation. He might realize come September, this isn't for me. This isn't what I signed up for. I signed up for Quinn Snyder. I signed up for a team that was going to compete every single season because that really has been the Jazz's MO even, the, even when they weren't a championship team. So you have that. So I could see him waiting for a while, but not too long. Big O, the same thing. I think someone like Bradley Beal, if his team gets off to a 1-9 start, a 2-14 and 14 start, it's not going to take till July. It's going to take till November. So when you said something about the players having a no-trade clause, I'm fine with that because those two guys have dictated the terms right. all along. Right. If the team had the no-trade clause, oh, no, then we're we don't screwed. have yeah. to trade you for something, of which there is no such thing, right. that would be a little bit different. Big O, again, Let's not just settle our focus on those two players. Situations happen, and you have to be ready to pounce. I mentioned to you the fr this Friday on, on our Accurate Pembroke Pines report, even someone like Joel Embiid, who gets very anxious and is very social media conscious, 
If this doesn't work, if James Harden shows up out of shape, if he isn't the player they thought, and all of a sudden Philadelphia goes sideways, you talk about lack of patience. All of a sudden, a Joel Embiid or someone like that could wind up in that situation also. So I think when you look at the league right now, there will be options, Big O. And it doesn't have to be a year from now. It could be a month or two or three months. I have never seen Heat Nation this anxious in July. It's remarkable. Well, because I, I think I think Heat Nation is anxious, and I think I think I'm anxious because you're always anxious. You know, that's true. That's true. But but the window's closing, and that's why I'm anxious because I, I don't want to wait till next year to make that move. In fact, I think I think you've waited too long already if you're Pat Riley. You have allowed three years of Jimmy Butler's career to play out. And you have milked it because you got to a final and you got to an Eastern Conference final. But I know what Pat Riley wants is what we all want is a title. And, you you know, the, the sands of the hourglass are coming. Are, they're happening right now. And that's what I'm worried about, that I, I you, time isn't on your side, no matter what the Rolling Stones tell you. And that's my problem, why I don't want to wait, because I don't think the heat can afford to wait. And, and Bigo, I, 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 I want to walk you through a few, a few things here, and, and we'll build as we go here. Mm -hmm. I agree that external change is sexy. It's exciting. It, it's, it, it's reviving. I get all of that. Without you going off on one of your tangents here a little bit, let's just go step by step. Mm -hmm. We both can agree that Kyle Lowry will be in better shape this season because he has to be, correct? I mean, I mean, he's he's a professional. He, right. he, he has will be. To he, he probably has won't to. have the same family emergency taking him away 30 games. You'll probably get more out of him. Okay. We both agree that Tyler Hero has been pretty good. Last year was a six-man of the year award season. Terrific. Terrific. In 2020 in the bubble, basically beat the Celtics himself mm -hmm. and then had a really crap-tastic postseason when he was injured. He might not be as good as he was during the regular season last year, but he certainly will not be as awful as he was during the playoffs. Would you well, agree with hurt. that? He was okay. hurt. I mean, so you're talking hurt. improvement there. Your favorite person in the world, who you rail about every week and I can see, you would agree that Bam Adebayo has to take another step, correct? I don't think he can. Okay. So yeah, that's, I don't, so that, that's I, don't, little, I, don't, I don't believe he's wired that way. I'm, okay, I'm, that's a little even stance. And what I'm telling yeah. you also about Jimmy Butler is this. You can talk about Jimmy Butler going from 31 to 32 to 33. But Big O, in his three seasons with the Heat, he's gotten the Heat to the NBA Finals. He's gotten the Heat within one of his shots in the Eastern Conference Finals. Jimmy Butler has not stepped back. He had a very, very good regular season last year. I, that, that's not what I'm worried about. I'm worried about the wear and tear on that body, and he does break down a lot. He's, but and he's it's worked, just but, gonna, and it's going to only get worse as the age builds. You know that, and I know that. But I'm just saying, in in the short term, right now, the Heat are still positioned. They're probably still a piece away, and it might have been just a retaining of PJ Tucker or something like that. The one thing I'll agree with: the Heat have lost something this off season, and they haven't replaced it yet. There yeah. still are options out there right now. They could still go to the full mid level and offer another four million dollar contract. They could still use the biannual exception and offer a $4 million contract. They still have, matter of fact, more than anything, and, and I can go through this with you. The ultimate Miami Heat chip is this, Duncan Robinson's $18 million contract. It gets you in the door salary-wise. Then mm -hmm. you get to the ancillary pieces, two draft choices, Tyler Hero, Yurtsevin, Struz, Vincent, you work all those other pieces. I'm glad the Miami Heat is not rushing out on July 11th and saying, all our chips to the middle of the table because we got a pair of kings and we feel pretty good. The, the patience is hard, but patience is also right. This team has done a lot of very good work over the years. Please go back and read my story in the Sun Sentinel in August and September. Sometimes you have to be patient. There's a reason the entire NBA personal market has dead stopped. Before you and I got out here to Vegas, it was crazy. It was crazy time. Everyone was signing. Right. And then crickets. And then after that Saturday of free agency, we've basically gone a week with almost nothing. Whether it's DeAndre Ayton getting his deal, what's going to happen with Miles Bridges, we don't know. Some other free agents out there. And the reason is, just like a few times LeBron James stalled the market, just like once Kawhi Leonard stalled the market, 
Right now, Kevin Durant and the Nets are stalling the market. You and I were sitting there the other day. Sean Marks was sitting a few rows below us. He's getting all his offers. The market is stalled right now, but you don't make a panic move. That's what bothers me. Oh, no. I, I, but, 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 but hold on a second. I'm not talking about a panic move. I'm talking about a star. A pa panic move is not Donovan Mitchell and Bradley Beal or something like that. That's not a panic move. That's what you – because you're, you're saying they need another piece. I say they need another star because Jimmy needs a star next to him. I, 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 I love improving from within, and that's a nice thought, but I don't expect Bam to become the offensive powerhouse that Jimmy needs next to him. Uh, Tyler is the one guy that has that opportunity to become that guy. Can he become that guy? Well, then we've we've got to see because he does have the moxie to to turn that light on and just become an offensive guy because he can he can get his shot at anywhere he wants. Or so, Orlando uh, Alzagari, who is light years ahead of the Heat in the Eastern Conference right now? What team are you putting up to me and saying, Ira? My God, this the Heat are way behind Team X. Who is Team X? Well, right now I would say they're not better than the. Milwaukee Bucks. But I'm saying who's light years ahead? Who's no, nobody nobody's that's light. That's what years I'm ahead. saying. They're but still within ahead. touch of the pack. Yeah, but within touch means you still you need that one star to put you over the top. Look, I'm watching Atlanta get better. Right. Now they're not now I, I still won't say that they're better than the Heat, but I've watched them get better now. You know what I'm saying? So Philadelphia also you know, got better. They should, and, and Embiid will be healthy next year. Embiid dominated for a while, while and then he'll be unhealthy again. <laughs> okay, but 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 he was he was unhealthy during the playoffs, and he dominated the Heat. If that guy's playing with a healthy hand and a healthy face, I I don't know if the Heat even survive with Philadelphia. And Philly should be better this coming season. Now, overall, it's just I'm watching. A Boston got better, man. They, they, they were already better than Miami, and they got better already. On you know what? They pulled away a little bit from the Miami Heat, actually, right now with the Brogdon move. That helped them a little bit. And Gallinari oh. can help them also. So, so yeah, I agree. I but, 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 you know, it's the I'm, 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 I'm not this. I'm, I'm not in love with Gallinari like other people, especially. No, like but you know, and you know what the know other move was? A little bit, but he does nothing else for you. And the other move was even Derek White at midseason last year that we saw as a little move. Matter of fact, let's face it, Big O. When Boston traded Josh Richardson for Derek White, we were like, eh, that's kind of an eh kind of move. And then right. we saw Derek White against the Heat, and he had his moments, and he was a game changer, mm -hmm. except the one game he had to miss for the birth of his child. So, it's also the incremental things that can get you there. But, but they have their Tatum and their Brown. We only have Butler. We don't have that other guy. Okay, because you're not putting Bam there. No, of course not. There's no way Bam's there. Bam is a – I gave him a role name already. He's a super role player. He's not a franchise player. I disagree with uh, – I remember uh, you and uh, – and, and uh, what's it called? Clay were talking about that. He's a super role player. He's a franchise Fran defender. No, fr franchise defender maybe, but he's not a franchise player. Franchise players can lead your team, okay? You, franchise players, you build around them. You, he's a he's a complementary player. He's a he's an extra piece. He's a role player. He's a super role player is what I call him. But he is not a star. You build around Shaquille O'Neal and Alonzo Mourning. You don't build around Bam out of Bayou. I'm just sorry. I'm sorry. I just don't see that in him. When, when you build around a guy that can impose his will, and Bam out of Bayou refuses to do that on a night in and night out basis. All right. Let me and pause you here. Let me pause you here. For, let me, let me pause you one second. Let me pause here. you for one second here because since we're in Vegas and we're probably going to run into him in the hallways again today, if we mm -hmm. head over to the the Vegas Summer yeah. League and Sean Marks, would you include Bam out of Bayou in a Kevin Durant trade proposal? Hells to the yeah. Would you offer Bam Adebayo, Tyler Hero, and two first-round draft choices? Hells to the yeah. See, I'm going to tell you something. And aggregators have fun with this. There are some in the heat who also would Orlando Alzagari. But there's at least one I know of who steadfastly said no. And I think that's where the heat are with the whole Durant thing. So when and, you I gotta, before, and, I, when, and I think that that was Spo that said no. It, it, it wasn't, but I'm not going to go name by name and give away my sourcing there. But what I'm going to tell you is this. 
is that that's why Sean Marks can wait. Because if there is a crack in all of these offers of one more, so for us, it's Bam Adebayo being the one more. If the Heat push Bam Adebayo to the table with Tyler Hero, with draft choices, it at least attracts the Brooklyn Nets' attention. Then you're Bring telling it. me as you wave on for those only listening on the podcast, Kevin Bring Durant, it. Jimmy Butler, Kyle Lowry. You're comfortable with that as being as good as anyone in the Eastern Conference? Yes. Yes, because I got my star now. Now I got the guy. Now Butler's the number two guy. And Kyle's and the Kevin, number three. And Kyle's and who the, the hell is your power rotation? Well, I mean, we'll figure that out after. You can you 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 <laughs> didn't you say they have the the exemption for this and the exemption for that? Okay. Well, then let's work so, those so exemptions that's what I'm now, baby. You, you, oh, you're always going to be a piece away, also, because there is no perfect team. Yeah, but it's a lot easier to find the role players around the stars than it is to find the stars. Okay, so this is what and, we're going to dig over. This is what we're going to do. Asking, you're asking me, can Bam become Durant? Can Tyler become Durant? Can he can, and not say become as good as Durant, but I'm saying become a star? I don't know, but I know Durant is, and right, I know so he's got we're, about we're, two years. We're, we're in Thomas and Mac, and there's that little hallway between Thomas and Mac and Cox Pavilion. Yes. You and I are going to corner Sean Marks. We're going to tell him Tyler Hero, Bam out of bio, two first round picks like the people do in the internet. And they always go, and who says no? So we'll try to corner the guy. I will bring my tape recorder. You can be my witness to sign the notary document. We will try to get this done today. That's it. That's it. And I'll be in my Angelo Dundee uh, uniform, too, at the same time when I'm uh, approaching Sean Marks, right? And that's what, that's what you're supposed to do, right? You're supposed we'll, to. We'll, we'll, get, we'll get this taken care of there. We'll give him the local <laughs> flavor. All right. Uh, by the way, some of the young guys, we, we talked a little bit about it um, uh, on Saturday when we were watching them. I like, I like a lot of these young guys. The Mulder kid, I find very interesting. He's bounced around. It's got a lot of experience. Obviously, Highsmith looks really good. The Bouye kid was kind of interesting. I love Orlando Robinson's moxie. I, I, he just he plays with a mature confidence about him, and I think he's that. I think that 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 confidence he has is going to help him grow really quickly. I can see why your son loved this kid because you. I really like what you I see. You know what? And Big O, I just, I just wrote about him at the Sun Sentinel. It'll be in your paper tomorrow, sunsentinel.com. Think about how the Heat have unearthed something out of nothing at center for years. We go back to Ike Austin, of course. Uh, more recently, Hassan Whiteside. Last year, Omar Yurtsev. And the Heat are really good at doing that. And I think he could be the next. It's really interesting. For all we talked about what the Heat don't have, they're sort of running out of roster spots. They might be down to just two spots for camp left but they only have two two-way contracts. And I think that's going to be the interesting math for you and I as we watch these remaining Heat Summer League games out here. Right now, the two-way contracts are held by Michael Mulder and Javante Smart. I can make an argument that Orlando Robinson deserves one. Oh, yeah. I can and will make an argument that Marcus Garrett deserves one. Yeah. His defense is sick. That yes, guy is a, that guy is a hungry dog. That guy and, is he's, like, and he's one of your taller guards too, by the way. And, and he's rangy also. So you have that also. So it's going to be interesting to see how they play out this two-way thing in the first place. And you could see what they saw in Haywood Highsmith. And when I talked to Andy Ellisberg and I said, well, what if you convert Haywood back to a two-way and you open a roster spot? And he said, look, we've got this guy under contract for two more years. Why would you mess with that? This is a guy we have at a minimum salary for two years who can do, this is my thought, some P.J. Tucker type of things. And we saw that you were sitting next to me there yeah. at the game Saturday at Thomas, you know, at, at, at Cox Pavilion. You can see what the kid can do. So, again, the one good thing I think we both agree with, the development pipeline is fine here right now. Yeah. They yeah. are positioned for the future, whether that includes Tyler and Bam and then these young kids, that's great. It's in the moment. It's because Orlando Alzagari saw the heat within one shot of the NBA Finals. And when you're close, oh, I agree. It's hard not to want a little bit more when all it takes is a little bit more. And by the way, I love uh, the Jovich kid. You can tell he's got all – you can see the skill set. But he's a while away. Oh, oh, no, yeah. He you has can, to fill he's, out, he's yeah. green. You can tell he's going to get pushed around. You, yes. you see a lot of what Tyler had to go through early on. You could tell that he's going to have to go through. No, and, and, and just to f just to fill people in, when we did post game interviews, you have to walk across a hallway and go downstairs. 
Big O even shoved Jovic out of the way. The guy is so frail. So that <laughs> sort of gives you perspective right there. Yeah, he's uh, he, but he's an interesting cat. You can you can see the skills. You know set. what? At number twenty seven, that's what you want. At number twenty seven, instead of getting some sloggy big man who's going to give you four minutes off the bench and six fouls, you go for the intrigue. They definitely got foreign intrigue at number twenty seven. Hey, wh what was LeBron James eating on the sidelines there when he brought his own snacks to the? Uh... You know, with LeBron James, he's eating whatever the hell he wants. It's incredible how, how he creates a buzz. And, and, and oh, you're seeing. And you're seeing this in Summer League, the buzz created by the guys who just happen in. You know, yeah. we talked about how it's great for the fans, it's fun for the media. The players eat this up, whether it's John Wall showing up or Kyrie Irving creating a scene or Dame Lillard. These guys know it really is an annual convention for the NBA, and I'm glad you sort of got a taste of that this year. Well, I, I, when I started the show, I talked about how I, I, for years I've told people, go to the Senior Bowl if you're a football fan because – you get to see these young stars and they're walking around like nothing and you get to meet them and all that. And the same thing here. And the difference Walk here is you're gonna, uh, the you're difference. Gonna see older players are going to see young players. You're going to see current players. And you're going to see NBA stars there also. The Senior Bowl, you don't have all the NFL players no. showing up. None Maybe a couple of alumni show up. Their season's you know, still going on in the playoffs. You have to be coaches, actually. Yeah, really. but this is, this is the present – and the future all yeah. in one place and accessible. You can bump into coaches, you bump into executives, you bump into scouts, you bump into players. It really is fascinating. People go to me, man, I saw those crowds. It's crazy how it is over there. You know what? This is NBA basketball at the right price and the right proportion. We're in the city of the buffet. You can show up at noon and be there till midnight watching games for one ticket. I'm not being a salesman here, but that's how unique this thing is. The NBA. Don't, don't tell me that basketball doesn't matter. You know yeah. what I mean? Because go watch this place. The two arenas are loaded day and night the entire time. People are love, and they're all, and they're coming from all over to come see their favorite teams, just I, like I, baseball spring training. And you Same see, thing. and you see it in this town with T-Mobile Arena for the Golden Knights, and you see it for the football yeah. stadium right out there on the highway. They're going to get their NBA team soon enough. There is a following, a passion here. And you can see that the NBA is meaningful. And, man, it's going to be interesting when that expansion team starts. How many guys are going to sign up for the expansion draft? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Will it be a new team? or Because New Orleans now may not be moving because they're actually they might be getting a good team now. So they might be able to stay there. It, will, will the NBA expand again? or do They will expand by two more teams. What they're going to do is get the new yeah. TV money, lock the TV money into the 30 teams that everyone gets their cuts, then tell two new teams – Next TV deal, you'll be taken care of. You can join our party. For a lot of teams, that $2 billion plus price gives them a nice infusion of cash that they might have lost during the pandemic. Everyone is talking about Seattle. A bunch of, of people are talking about out here in Vegas. And what's going to happen is there's a bunch of teams in the Western Conference right now that shouldn't be. Memphis is in the Western Conference. New Orleans is in the Western Conference. And the West had been so competitive for so long, there's a bunch of teams that would love nothing more than to shift over to the Eastern Conference. Oh, we get so, John Moran in the East. That would be freaking yeah. awesome. Except for the Heat. So, yeah, I agree with that. I, I mean, and, whatever. It's competition's competition. Yeah, I, I, I think I think Vegas and Seattle right now, Seattle will help Portland have a closer team. There'll be less travel. So I could see that happen. Minnesota for years has petitioned to get back in the East because of their proximity to Milwaukee and to Chicago. Right. So right. there'll be teams lined up to go the other way also. And also – for TV deals, when you're East and Central time zone, those West Coast games don't get you great TV ratings when they're starting in your local market or 9 or 10 o'clock. So that's part of it. So, yeah, I think that's a reason for Westward Ho for the NBA. There you go. All right. I'll see you uh, later this afternoon, my brother. Appreciate you as always. Thank you for taking some time. Follow him on Twitter at Ira Winderman. Oh, I'm sorry, Ira Heatbeat. And then follow him, of course, there at the South Florida Sun Sentinel and subscribe. Ira, as always, thank you, my man. Catch you again Friday. Another accurate Pembroke Pines report. Thank you, Big O. You got it. There you go. Ira Winderman. We'll see him in a few minutes. Well, a couple hours still. It's 8 o'clock. It's 8 o'clock.